I've got a bone to pick with trail running shoes. So I don't know about you, if you have dealt with the same things I've dealt with, but I've gone through a lot of trail running shoes to find the perfect fit, and I've gone through three pairs that have not really done it for me. And that's annoying, right? I don't know for whatever reason why finding a good trail running shoe has become difficult in ways. And I can kind of guide you through what's been happening because these are all the trail running shoes I own and each one has a kind of a different story to it. So I'm hoping that by kind of going over what I've seen and figured out and what things actually matter and what I found what actually matter, by going through all this, it might make it easier for you to find your next trail running shoe and make it an easy time without any headaches. Because let me tell you, finally getting to my newest pair, which I can hint at right here, it took a long time and a lot of unnecessary stress about shoes. So with that being said, let's just kind of get into it. So the shoes that I've probably owned for the longest time are these Artera shoes. I think I got them right around the same time. And I kind of went into these Arteric shoes because, you know, I thought that Arteryx would make really good trail running shoes because, you know, Arteryx are a brand that's based in, they're based in Canada and on, I think it's Vancouver area. And they're based in Canada. They have a lot of mountainous terrain there. They're in the Pacific Northwest where I'm in the Northwest. So pretty close proximation. And, you know, Arteryx is known for making bomb-proof gear that lasts and performs at a high level. So taking that into account, I was like, yeah, Arteryx should be a good shoe to get. You know, they will handle the trails. They're rugged. They'll do everything. And there are parts of the shoes that follow that kind of mentality, but there's a lot that doesn't. So with that being said, let's just kind of jump into the first shoe. They'll cover from Arteryx, and that is the Noravan SL2. I think they're on the Noravan SL3 by now. Maybe, maybe not. These shoes I kind of got because I was looking for a lightweight shoe. You know, things I read at this time was like lightweight shoes. You know, you're going to have better feel. It's going to be better. And I was just looking for a more breathable shoe for hot days, right? Because, I mean, with these, you can really see through. And I mean, you can kind of see right through right here. There's a mesh. And I was like, these shoes are going to be great when it's really hot. And they do prove to be pretty good when it's hot, but it's weird. So the upper is of a different material. It's not a material that you would see in any of these. It's actually like a TPU um, kind of grid film sort of. Uh, the only way I can really describe it is like it's the same material that your screen door is made out of. And that is really weird because, you know, there is not a lot of give to this. Whereas like all these shoes here have a mesh upper. So with a mesh upper, your feet can kind of, you know, if they swell, they'll just expand the mesh, no problem. With these, if your feet start to swell, the GPU does not stretch and uh, it gets a little weird. But also the other weird part is, is getting into these shoes because again, when you have this material that's semi-rigid and doesn't really stretch getting these shoes on is kind of a pain so that was one thing they're a very minimalist shoe i mean we're talking with like a heel counter that's all that's not even really there there's some like selective padding in the heel they're a very weird shoe the, probably the one highlight that i really like about these shoes is that the insole the insert is actually just stitched into it and there's, it's not removable that is actually really nice because you don't get any insert slip and no random blisters on your feet if you're what goes into like a crack of the insert. So that's really nice. And the other highlight I would have to say is the outsole. Um, the outsole is Vibram Mega Grip with light base construction. This thing has proved to be very durable and it all it's, it's also kind of why I'll hint right here. Both of these have Vibram Mega Grip and Fiber Mega Grip is the same compound that is in my TX3s, uh, my Lost Protiva TX3s, my approach shoes, and I trust that compound. So when I saw that these have Vibram, I was like, bam, I'm sold. I want to do this. So the outsole is really good still, great condition. The uppers is weird. It really is like a screen door. 
but the durability is kind of questionable with it, a lot of these things. So you can kind of see here, it's more aesthetic. It's not going to really affect how the shoe performs, but you can kind of see that it's kind of ripping right here. And it's kind of the same on the other one as well. And that's kind of weird for how expensive these are. Um, we know these aren't the most expensive shoes in the world, but they're set at a rate that Arteryx kind of has, and you would expect with Arteryx that you'd have better quality with them. And I was surprised because when these started to rip, I think I'd only owned them for, I don't know, three months. So that was kind of weird. And then the, the outsole or the midsole kind of feels weird. You know, it's kind of got like a plasticky feel. I don't know if you can hear that. They're just weird. They're not very cushioning. They're not very supportive. Uh, whenever I run in these, it kind of hurts to run in these. I mean, that is granted. That's what a lightweight shoe is. But they're just like even running on a treadmill is kind of weird in these. And especially when you're on the trails, there's not a lot of protection. I think really realistically, the only protection you're getting is like the full length rubber outsole that is decently thick. But... The problem is, is that if that's your only protection, and if you're running on really rocky terrain, it's not going to go well. It just, you're going to feel everything underfoot. So the Noravan SL2 has probably a place and probably has a dedicated following. Um, but for me, it's not that great of a shoe. Uh, I wasn't too impressed with it. So, and that leads to this next one, which is the Noravan LD2. So, again, this shoe, I think, is on the Noravan LD3 right now, or maybe 4. It's been a little while since I've ha uh, got these. And these kind of go to aim to fix the problems of the Noravan SL2, like what my problems were. You know, they're not very comfortable, there's not a lot of cushioning, so they put more cushioning right here in the heel and in the forefoot. And, you know, that should, you know, make for a more comfortable ride. The LD stands for long distance. And it is kind of, that's what the shoe is shown to be. And all the promotional stuff and marketing is shown to be a long distance shoe. Well, again, I feel like these shoes kind of come up short. Um, they don't perform really well. They're not really a fast shoe. You really feel a lot underground. Like there is no protection on these. Again, the only thing you have is realistically this outsole. And that's really your biggest protection. And then other than this foam, which this foam is dense and it's hard. And I mean, I don't know if you can see, there's not a lot of give to it. So what does that entail? It's not a comfortable ride. It really is not a comfortable ride when you're running. And I've kind of degraded these to just only to train in them. And I don't really even enjoy training in them. Probably the only good thing I can say really about them is probably the outsole. You know, it is another fiber mega grip with light face. It's just the outsole is really durable, and I like that. You know, whenever you see a Vibram logo, logo, you know it's going to be quality. You know it's going to last, and you know it's going to perform at a high at a high point. But other than that, I really just I haven't had a great time with the shoe. Sure, there's a couple ingenious things like you know they have the little lace pouch that all like Solomon's have. They have a gusseted tongue, which is kind of nice. Um, they have a microfiber lining, which is different. I mean, most things just go for like a more mesh and open style mesh, whereas this goes for microfiber. Um, but kind of the same thing with the Norvan. You know, I was pretty like, I was pretty impressed that these were holding up to for a couple more months than the Norvan when they started to kind of deconstruct a little bit. But yet again, had to deal with, you know, this is now ripped off. And it's just, it is really weird to see this from... An Arteryx shoe, when Arteryx prides themselves on quality and their quality materials used. Um, but maybe that's more just indicative of their shells, you know. And it is, you know, I'm not really blaming Arteryx for trying to make a shoe, but it kind of goes to my philosophy with a lot of running shoes, or any shoes in general, is like, what does the company specialize in? If the company specializes in clothing, probably shouldn't trust their shoes all the time and it's kind of the same thing i might throw shade onto the north face when they make shoot i don't think the north face shoes are really great i think they're subpar but if you go with a company like la sportiva 
you know, they specialize in shoes. They make shoes, so they should know how to make a good shoe. Whereas Arteryx, it's questionable. So I'm not a huge fan of these. So I don't think these perform really well. Every time I've gone out onto the trail and ran in them, my feet kill me. I get blisters in them. And I really, like I said, I've had to demote these just to training. And I don't even really like them a lot for training. So these Arteryx shoes, not great. So be aware of when you look at Arteryx shoes. They're not as great as you think they'd be. The foam is definitely really weird just because it's like it's like a hard, dense styrofoam. It's not that great. So Arteryx shoes, beware. So then going off of that, that brings us to the last for two shoes. So these were kind of my next step up after having not a great time with these two. I knew that I ne immediately need to get into a better shoe that is more equipped for mountain running and mountainous terrain. And that has a proven history. And I went to the Crackles. So I did a review on these Crackles. And in that review, I was kind of nervous about doing it. I don't really know how to review um, trail running shoes. But I kind of have a better idea now. So to preface this, I didn't even get into these because I don't like the performance of these. And actually, what I'm going to do is they're gone now. I don't even want to talk about them. They're not that great for performance. So I'll just leave it with these. So the Crackles. I'll kind of do another re-review because now I have a little bit more thoughts on how to actually review trail running shoes. And so the Crackle. The Crackles are a good quality shoe from Sportiva. They're more pitched as a long distance running shoe and recovery run shoe for Sportiva. They take after traits of the Jackal. But, you know, they have an increase of foam, so you get a higher stack height. And I think you have like a 6 or 7 millimeter drop. I will put the exact stats at the bottom so you can kind of see what it is. Um, but overall, they're decently cushioned from Sportiva. Surprisingly, though, they're not their most cushioned shoe. And that's something that sparks me with my look for a new pair of trail running shoes is Sportiva really doesn't have a lot of high cushion shoes. And that's a little weird in some aspects. But they have a lot of weird differences in their like in each category. So what I got sucked into when I was looking for trail running shoes was well, what's the sack height in the heel and what's the sack height in the forefoot? What's the drop? And then was it lower volume or was it high volume shoe? And Sportiva has a really weird array of shoes. So something like the uh, Wildcats. The La Sportiva Wildcats are kind of their all-rounder shoe that can kind of handle everything. Um, they're really, they're a good shoe overall for like walking. But for running, they're weird because they're heavy. They're kind of not secure in their lacing system. But the biggest point that's really weird is that there's like a, I think there's like a 12 meter, millimeter drop, which 12 millimeters, I mean, I'm over exaggerating here, but it almost feels like your feet are like this. That's kind of weird. So Sportiva does have a weird array. So you think that with a shoe that looks like this, it looks pretty high cushioned, would be their highest cushion shoe. When it's not, the highest cushion shoe for Sportiva is the Akasha 2. And I wanted to get my hands on the Akasha 2 to review. I just didn't, and I didn't really want to justify getting another pair if I didn't know really what how it was going to do because there's some things with sportiva shoes that are kind of weird they have a lot of like older style technology or, old, or older style design in their shoes and i didn't know if that's exactly what i was looking for um so yeah I, but i do i am still curious about the akashas and if i ever get the akashas i'll make sure to review them and let you guys know but i did move on from sportiva since then but for the craggles you know for what they're worth they are a pretty good shoe the foam is definitely softer than the Arteric shoes. It has more rebound, but you can kind of tell for what stride or what striker these shoes were meant for. Um, they are definitely more for a heel or maybe a midfoot striker, and that goes against what I do. I'm a forefoot striker, and you can kind of see in the wear pattern of the sole, they are definitely more worn out in like the left hand side of the shoe where I strike. So, and that's what I kind of learned with these shoes is that they're not really great for four foot strikers. And I didn't really like the amount of rock protection that they had in there because it felt like there was not a whole lot. Sportiva says on their um, description of the shoe that it has a full length um, kind of rock guard. And it is right here. 
you can hear it. It's kind of like a softer yet semi-rigid plastic that kind of goes throughout the whole midfoot, but it's more posed right in the heel and in the this in midfoot and forefoot. And there is more plastic in the in the midfoot. But what I found when using this is that I would step on like a rock, probably a little pointy rock about the size of my thumb, and I'd feel it. And it was not a great time and you get kind of stumbled around a lot when you step on something like that sharp or even step on a root that feels weird like it stumbles you a little bit more and I wasn't a huge fan of that and I also felt like these shoes are weirdly high volume you know Sportiva shoes are also known for being really low volume and really narrow for my foot they feel pretty wide for me um, but a lot of their shoes I really like because they are low volume in the foot box and I have a pretty low volume foot to that now these have like more volume up to here, which is kind of weird because they're pretty low volume in the toe box. But what that kind of leads to happen, for me at least, was I kind of didn't really have a great security with the with the shoe. I felt that if I was going on uneven terrain or if I was like launching off of a berm, like my foot would start to tilt and twist on the inside. So I never had a really locked down feel. And the fit was kind of weird off the bat. So I've sized these shoes as I do every Sportiva shoe as a European 44. And when I was started when I started running in them, I'm my toes were hitting the end, which was super weird because every other shoe I've gotten from Sportiva in a 44 fits me just great, with the exception of the boulders, the big sock. But like it was really weird to have a weird fit. And then after the more miles I put into them. You know, they did start to break in, got a little more comfortable, you know, had a little bit more room, things kind of stretched. But still, they're not, they're not really a secure shoe for me. So I was just looking for something different. And after reading a couple of reviews around for them and also coming to the conclusion that, yeah, these aren't really a good forefoot striking shoe, I did decide to move on from it. Like I said, I probably would have done the Akasha 2 and I am still interested in the Akasha 2. It's just... I didn't know if it's exactly what I wanted. So I did move on from the Crackle. Overall, they are still a pretty dang good shoe. Like I said, if you are more of a heel to midfoot striker, you'll probably enjoy them a lot. I just found for forefoot striking, there wasn't enough protection or enough cushioning. And I think it's weirdly enough, I think there's only 22 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. So they're kind of skimpy when it comes to that. So. Yeah, that's the Crackle, kind of an updated re review, even though it's been just a, a little while since I did an actual review. But yeah, so that's the Crackle. But what I decided to move on to was the Hoka Speed Go 5. Um, this was my... I had one of two choices that I was going to do for shoes. I was going to do the La Sportiva Akasha 2, or I was going to do these. I've been curious about Hoka because, you know, what's Hoka known for? Their massive amount of cushioning and big shoe feel, which is kind of weird when you're talking about trail running. Um, a lot of people have kind of thoughts on these shoes for with Hoka's for trail running is that they feel too big, too cushioned, and you get you lose all sense of what's going on underfoot. And that is true to a certain point. I mean, that is something that like the Arteryx Norvan SL, these ones, do really well they are very lightweight and they're very sensitive so you know what you are what you're stepping on the downside to that is is your feet start to hurt after a while and this is where i got really confused because when you start looking up shoes and people who are reviewing trail running shoes they were putting these categories of well if it's less than two hours of a run they're like go for something like the noravan sl or the la sportiva bushido 2 which the Bishudo, the Bishudo 2 is kind of like the S, the Norvan SL, but you know, it's Sportiva, so it's a little bit higher quality, a lot more higher quality. Um, but I, that kind of blew me away. I'm like, why would you want a shoe that's that thin and not comfortable? And you're going to like kind of basically limit yourself to only using that shoe if it's less than a two hour run. And because what I was doing, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not doing any ultra marathons. I'm not doing anything super hard. I'm just, trail running as another means to train for kind of climbing and I was like I just want a comfortable ride when I run and I think a lot of people do want that too 
But I just kind of found that a lot of the reviews I was reading were very adamant on using a thin shoe for training. And whether that's even like, I was looking up stuff for even road running too, and that's kind of the same vibe. And I'm like, I get that it strengthens your foot, but if running's not my main thing, I just want an occasional shoe that I can move fast in or do a bigger hike in. Like, I just want to be comfortable in that shoe. And that is kind of what got me to look at Hoka because it is a massive amount of foam. But going back onto what I kind of mentioned was people didn't really care for the Hokas because they were so thick and you didn't have that good sensitivity. What I can say about that is it's very much almost on a case-by-case bias base, basis, not bias. Um, what I kind of was thinking about was I was like, you know, like it really depends on what your taste is. So let's say you're going to go backpacking and you have the choice of footwear between ultras because i think they're one of the most popular for like through hiking and all that or a pair of boots and you choose ultras you might not really care for the hokas i only say that because ultras are a pretty sensitive shoe and kind of thin in ways they get more of a feel for the ground and if you like that and prefer that you want you value more sensitivity to the ground whereas person like me i prefer my boots so like my Lost Rativa Equilibrium ST, I love them. I will do anything and everything in those boots. I've done a lot of hiking. I've done a lot of just backpacking. I've done even trail running in them. Like trail running in boots. That should not be a term that you should be really saying. But I've done it and I actually enjoy it. I really like the Equilibriums for their support and their stability. And I was kind of applying that of what was the biggest gripe with hokas and it was well you don't feel the ground well i was kind of thinking about that and i was like you know it really just depends because i feel like when i wear boots you just develop a ground sense when you wear boots for long enough you do kind of have a feel for what the terrain is underfoot granted like you might not know exactly what it's underfoot like if you step on a pebble you're probably not going to feel it on the on your boot whereas you might feel it in a trail run issue that's pretty lightweight when I was taking that into account, I was like, well, if you just use it for a little bit long enough or you get accustomed to it, you know, that sensitivity, I don't need direct sensitivity in my shoes to feel confident on the terrain that I'm on because I wear boots and I have ran in boots and I like it. So I was like, it shouldn't really matter. So then I was willing to take a risk on the Hokas and I've done, I just got these probably like a week ago. And I've done, I think, 12 or 13 miles in them. I really like them. I like them a lot. And everything that I had an idea of why I would like them and what other people said they disliked about them, I really like about them. I don't feel like these are super, like, non-sensitive to the ground. When I was running, I felt like I could feel everything underfoot. But that, again, might just come down to, you know why I prefer boots and I've just been more accustomed to that kind of lack of sensitivity while developing somewhat of a sensitivity to the ground where while wearing thicker or more cushioned sh shoes or stiffer shoes so I found that the Hogas were really good they also are very they're pretty low volume I was very surprised on this um, my previous like kind of times I've tried Hogas and never really got to run in them I was just was trying them on I could never get a good fit and I think that was before I was going into using European size as a reference. I do recommend you trying to get your European size figured out because as soon as I figured that out, I got these in a size 44, which are 10, whereas like these are a 44, but they're considered a 10 and a half plus US. So get your European sizing and generally it will be the correct size for you. So sizing 44, great. They felt great. You know, put in the runner's loop and, you know, my heel didn't slip really like these we'll do more than an in-depth review on them when i get more mileage on them but so far they're really comfortable and i like them a lot so what am i trying to say through this whole video realistically i think here are the things that you need to take away one maybe don't get involved too much with the stats um, if you're looking for a shoe and you get into the stack and like with all the, the different stats between drop sack height and all that really just look for something that you think you're going to be comfortable in like my difference was when i found these is i was just looking for a, a comfortable shoe that i could run in and i wouldn't be feeling lots of pain so 
I went to that, looked at the Hoka, being like, wow, there's a lot of foam in the heel and the forefoot. Pretty more foam than a lot of other brands. So why not try these out? So just generalize what the numbers that you're looking for. Don't get sucked into it. Two, probably one of the biggest things, look for the fit. Don't get a shoe that doesn't fit. I know this is probably, this is standard when it comes to shoes, but re really just look for a shoe that fits really well. I bought the La Sportiva Crackles because they were La Sportiva and that was kind of really it. Um, and because they're more of a higher volume shoe, I would have been better in something that, from Sportiva that was lower volume. So don't just get it because it's the name or you think it'll have a better performance. Definitely get something that fits you. I was fortunate with the Hoka's that they are a pretty low volume shoe and my fit, my, and my feet feel great in them. So make sure the fit is really good. And that's pretty much the two that are pivotal for finding a trail running shoe. You know, like you can look up a lot of reviews and reviews can help sometimes if you get an idea of like how they do on certain terrain. But I was finding a lot of the information that I was looking at on trail running shoe reviews. It was like, I don't know, everything that I was reading posed certain shoes to not do well in certain terrain when I'd be running on the same terrain and I'd be like, well, no, these sh shoes did great. I don't know why these people are saying that they didn't do great. So take every review with a grain of salt, even mine, but just, just be aware that a review might not be a complete and yeah, just a complete review of the shoe that it'll work and it'll work for every environment that it's being tested in because realistically a lot of reviewers are testing them in every environment so just be aware of that and yeah so that's kind of my end of my trail running shoe fiasco i've got the hokas now i really like them what i like mostly about them is that i can go at a consistent speed and i don't feel like i get a lot of fatigue so that's why I really like the Hoka's now and yeah so that is like I said the end of my trail running shoe fiasco if you have any questions or anything at all feel free to leave a comment if you have a question I'll try to get to it as fast as possible I know there's probably stuff I glazed over if you want to hear more about the Arteric shoes maybe just leave a comment I don't think I'm going to do a review on them I just yeah, they're not too great of a shoe and I don't really like to do a lot of them so you will see a review on the Hoka's soon, like I said, once I get more miles in them. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's kind of long, and it's more of a rant kind of sort of thing. But yeah, I, well, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.